Now, if you're like me, you've probably been following the heated discussions around the Heels in the Air saga. Today, I'm finally sharing my perspective on this issue. I know I'm a bit late to the party, but sometimes it's good to take a step back and let the dust settle. <laughs> Heels in the air, those words alone have ignited countless debates. Is it truly a case of racism or something more complex? I dug deep into the content of this blog, and let me tell you, the depth of information is beyond belief. If you've taken the time to read her blog, you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. You'd know there's a lot more beneath the surface. Remember that whole Trayvon Martin case? Yeah, I was about 23 when that went down, and honestly, my takeaway back then was pretty much like everyone else's, George stalked and shot an unarmed kid. But then I read the blog, and let me tell you, it was a real eye-opener. The blog's thoroughness, the links to sources, even those hard-to-find old videos, it all painted a vivid picture. This blog totally blew my mind because it exposed how easily mainstream media had manipulated not just me, but countless others. I mean, come on, we all saw the headlines and jumped to conclusions. But the actual evidence? Yeah, not so much. Speaking of mainstream media brainwashing the general public, I've got to talk about my feelings of disappointment, particularly in burnt toast. Here was a creator I respected, that radio voice of hers, she's got to be connected to media somehow, right? But, hey, it's just my opinion, who knows? It was a voice of reason. But when the drama unfolded, instead of doing the responsible thing and reading the whole blog, she skimmed through about a quarter of a few pages and got everyone all riled up. Way to go, burnt toast, leading people down the wrong path. She incited outrage without full context, just like the very cows she talks about. All right, let's wrap things up by revisiting that live stream. It's time for a detailed analysis, breaking down the points made, the emotions stirred, and where things went wrong. As always, I encourage thoughtful discussion and the pursuit of truth. To write an open letter to the mother of a murder victim. He wasn't the victim. He was the aggressor. The victim being... Trayvon Martin. Okay. This was part of her blog. Okay. She says, um, <clears throat> quote, Trayvon did not deserve to die. And she put that in quotes. But honestly, he did deserve to be raised better. And no, starting a fight could well get him killed by people who didn't get the environment he came from. Just going to throw this out there. Um, <clears throat> if Bullhorn Betty had said this, do you think that I would call that out? What exactly are you, quote, calling out? That would be a yes. So why would I not call this out when I find out that it was one of my, my own mods? And if you're wondering, she lost her mod. Oh, like the second that I started reading this blog, I was like, oh, hell no. Oh, it gets worse. Way, way worse. Okay. You are calling Trayvon a victim because he was black. Your subscribers are blaming the actual victim. How can this get any worse? But George Zimmerman was crying out for help and no one helped, and it continued. It continued until you hear the shot. You can hear the cries for help up until the moment of the shot, and then there's no more cries for help. Why would there be? Um, it's pretty bad, a lot of it's really bad. Let's see, here she is talking directly to the mom. Well, there it is. I guess it can get worse. Her audience is blaming another white victim, one not much older than the aggressor, Trayvon Martin. Uh, she says the mom's name. I'm not going to put that lady's name on blast, but she put, says mom's name. You stood at a podium once and said, quote, they killed my son and now they're killing his reputation, end quote. Is this blanket, it's, it is this blanket accusation and denial of responsibility or knowledge of your own son that infuriates many? In this way, you use they as if killing your son was a conspiracy by a group of people, no doubt white people. Hey, um, just a question, Heels. I thought you said in your stream just now that your blog had nothing to do with race. Well, obviously your reading is much better than your comprehension, sweetie. It says it clearly right here at the top. The blog is about rewinding the bias, 
like yours, until we get to the truth. It seems like every single post that I was reading, and I read all of it, by the way, you go out of your way to make it a race thing. That was my observation. Team Brittany, thank you so much. This is making me so sick. I really am struggling with this. Thank you, Toasty. Uh, yeah, let me tell you, this is not fun for me. I am not getting any enjoyment from this. All right? I am not. Um, she goes on to say, um, talking about Trayvon Martin, it's about a teenager who was looking for a world star hip-hop fight and ran into a man who didn't know what the hell hit him. And there's all kinds of, like, references, just like Nunya said on her stream tonight. Nunya hit the nail on the head and asked her the question that I've been trying to get Heels to answer this entire time. Um, Heels goes on. One thing I believe in my heart of hearts is that you both know the truth in your heart of hearts, and so do the upstanding, so do the upstanding thing, not the corrupt, sharp, and self-serving thing. Trust me, Trayvon's legacy will be tarnished as to Juana Brawley and Crystal credibility if you do not take control of it now. What has come out, Trayvon may turn out to be inadmissible in a court of law, but he was real. He his misguided aspirations were real, and I believe the true cause of his demise. His wish to be a gang banger thug, or I'm sorry, gangster thug. Heels, I thought you said in your stream tonight that you weren't calling black people thugs and gangsters. She was calling this particular black person a wannabe gangster. What are you saying here, dumb dumb? All okay. black people are the same. All right. So she goes on again. She's speaking to the mother of a victim here. The mother of a murdered child. Trayvon was a victim of his own upbringing and stupidity. You claim to have read the whole blog, but again, you're showing your lack of comprehension skills here. And so the whole time she's live tonight, I'm like, I, I cannot believe she's sitting here acting like we're all stupid and can't read this for ourselves. I, I, I don't even know what to say <laughs> at this point. I, I don't understand when people lie about things that are so easily proven otherwise. I don't understand that. Before we broke, I said I wanted to talk about forensic evidence. I do want to talk about forensic evidence because that's science. You can hold your hand around it. You can examine it. It's not subject to bias if the experts are qualified. It's real. It doesn't change. So here's the science around the gunshot. We have this. We have a contact wound with or a contact with the fabric and not a contact with the skin. So then you would say, I would think, how could that happen? Here's how. Just the way John Good saw it. He saw Trayvon Martin straddling George Zimmerman and leaning over him, hitting him or punching him or pushing him. When you lean over, gravity pulls the fabric away. It separates, not like this, but like this. And you might say, well, how, how could that really happen? We know it did, first of all. But secondly, there's one other big piece of evidence that fits together perfectly that shows that John Good saw these two men in the position um, at the time. John, the way John Good described the position they were in when he saw him was the same position they were in when the shot was fired. And that is this. Do you remember the 23-ounce can of fruit juice by Arizona? Do you know where that was? It was in the front pouch. It was in the hooded sweatshirt in the pocket. That's where it was recovered. So in addition, we have not just leaning over, but we have extra weight in the front. We have a mechanism that explains that. Trayvon Martin's leaning over straddling him MMA style, the ground and pound. George Zimmerman is crying for help, no one's helping, and he's finally able to get the gun out and shoot. And when he does, he doesn't even push it into his chest. 
He just gets it out enough that it touches the fabric. Has a permit, has had a permit for a couple of years. Licensed and responsible, but yes, he did have the gun, and thank God. Because at that moment, he was able to retrieve the gun when he couldn't take it anymore, when he'd been crying for help for 40 seconds, when, when it appeared as though Trayvon Martin may be reaching for it even. After having his head bashed, his bell rung, his nose fat, uh, smashed, he gets the gun. And what does he do with it? He just raises it. That's all. He just raises it. As Trayvon Martin leans over, he pulls the trigger. Now, that matches exactly, scientifically, that the weighted front, the leaning over, the contact with the fabric, but not with the skin. 